We've all had that iconic moment of childhood. The bus drops you off after school, you throw your book back on your porch, you run up the steps of your friend's house, you knock on their door, and you ask their parents if they can come out and play. But those seem like distant memories. When's the last time you actually played? And what does playing even look like for adults? I'm here to show you what it looks like today. Over the past year and a half, I've rediscovered my sense of childlike play, and it's completely changed how I approach life. It's led me to self-realization, true happiness and adventure, enrichment of all aspects of my life. And somehow, it all relates back to showering with my best friends. <laughs> <laughs> Let me explain. Last fall, it's our freshman year of college, we all traveled from far and wide to pursue our dreams in education, and now we're here. We're living in a dorm of 30 guys we've never met before with one bathroom. With four showers, only three of which that actually worked. <laughs> Just as so you'd expect, there was a tension between us all at the start of the year. I mean, this was a new experience for all of us, but I'll never forget the moment in which we broke the ice. One night, my roommate Andreas, our neighbor Mark and I, all coincidentally decided to shower at the same time. It was beautiful and wholesome. With the steamy aroma of cheap soap in the air, we broke down barriers and started to really learn about each other's lives and interests. In that moment, we started knitting a new family, something that is so important and comforting when moving away from home for the first time. Afterwards, we coined the event Team Shower and agreed to do it the next night. Eventually, our friends Ben, Rohit, and even our RA Caleb joined. And within a few months, nearly our entire floor was part of our showering family. <laughs> but now that we were all comfortable with each other, team showers started to get a lot crazier, but a lot more fun. See, the ice wasn't just broken at this point, it was shattered. And this next phase of team shower was the birth of something truly special. It was a beautiful yet hilarious chaos, resulting from a bunch of teenage boys simultaneously pranking each other in the showers. It started off innocent, you know, squirting soap at each other, throwing rubber ducks between the stalls. But it escalated really fast, from spraying silly string and hot sauce, to food and water fights, to countless horrifying instances in between. We didn't know it at the time, but what we were actually doing was playing. We let the beauty of the sliver of childish spirit still remaining inside us to shine through and enjoy our friendships in the truest and silliest of ways. The concluding long day of studying and meetings and homework cascaded down the drain as we played and had fun of the same nature as we all did when we were younger. It made us happy and re-energized us for the next day of class and that's why we team showered every single night. Now, to some of you, this idea of barbarically pranking each other in the showers might sound awful, and rightfully so. It probably sounds like warfare against each other because it kind of was. But I'm telling you, there was a moment when each of us let go and understood what we were doing was more than just a fun activity. Mine was when we were doing the cinnamon challenge in the showers. <laughs> And I ended up spitting cinnamon out all over my body, which induced a massive rash. <laughs> so, th there I was, right? Writhing in irritation on the floor of the shower when our friend Jacob opened the curtain and harpooned me with a toilet plunger. <laughs> <laughs> See, the old me would have freaked out over the pain and lack of cleanliness, but in that moment, I let go. And I know it sounds dramatic, and probably too profound to come out of playing in the shower. But in that moment, team shower made me rethink my entire life. See, we're always caught up on what's next. The next big test, the next big, big interview, internship, the next whatever. In that moment, team shower made me let go of what's next and focus on what's happening now. And what's happening now is I just got stabbed by a toilet plunger and we're all hysterically laughing about it. I realize what truly matters to me in my heart is playing with my best friends. We realized that this team showering we had created 
was nothing more than an environment for us to be silly and spontaneous while reaping the enrichments of childlike play. This is how we began our arc towards finding true happiness, but this is also where it gets really crazy. See, because when you were playing with your friends as a kid, say you were playing pirates, you created imaginary adventures for yourself to go on. You boarded enemy ships, battled against krakens, and conquered the seven seas. You didn't just stay on your fictional ship and pretend to swab the deck. So we knew if we were to truly use Team Shower as our form of play, we'd have to create an adventure for ourselves. A goal. A conquest. <laughs> our goal was to shower in every freshman dorm before the end of the year. <laughs> in seven months removed from that campaign, I stand here today and can safely and proudly say that we didn't even come close. <laughs> not at all. But in typical TED Talk fashion, that's not the point. <laughs> See, because when kids play together, it's not whether or about they accomplish these goals or not. The only measure of success of playing is, did you have fun? And I'm telling you, there is nothing more fun than spontaneously summoning an army of your friends to take over a random dorm's bathroom. <laughs> But better yet might be the people we met along the way. Because don't get me wrong, we made a lot of enemies in different dorms <laughs> as we conquered and aped around in their showers. But every now and then, we would find a Billy. <laughs> See, Billy's dorm was the very first one we hit along our conquest. After we left, his floor mates were furious with the mess we created in their showers, and they had every right to be. But Billy thought it was really cool how committed we were to our silly showering mission, but more importantly, how committed we were to each other in order to accomplish it. He didn't know us and we didn't know him, but our values are pretty similar. As fate would have it, we ended up crossing paths a few months later. We hit it off on account of this previous event, and now Billy is one of my roommates. <laughs> but why should you care about a bunch of teenage boys showering across Atlanta? <laughs> See, even if you're not into playing in the shower, and I honestly hope you're not, okay? <laughs> you can still take something from this, and that's to find what play means to you. While we're all past the age of playing imaginary pirates, we can still incorporate the spirit of childlike play into our everyday lives. It starts by finding something you love to do just for the hell of it. Not because it's good for you or your career, just because you love it. No ulterior goal. It could be playing an instrument, rock climbing, painting, programming, cooking, basket weaving. I don't care. It could be something you love, whether it's because you're passionate about it or it's just downright silly and fun. There's something out there for everyone. So even if you don't feel like you have a passion, please get out there and try new things because no one can find one for you. But once you have this activity that brings you pure fun and joy, you have your vessel for play. Now, there are three main things of what you need to do to effectively use this vessel. First, you need people. I mean, you can't play without playmates, whether it's one or two or, well, 19. Go out and find people who share your passion. Join online forums and Facebook groups and go to local meetups because I promise you, it's always more fun to play with others than alone. Second, you need spontaneity. Children don't follow a strict schedule when they play, and neither should you. If your sense of play is, say, cycling, don't be confined to a routine of cycling the same route at the same time every single day. You're never going to meet new people, see new things, nor have new experiences that way, and those are some of the biggest joys of playing. Instead, be spontaneous. Cycle whenever you can, in the morning, at night, during your lunch break. Randomly pick different routes and trails. This will lead you towards finding adventure. But how you truly find adventure is by establishing your goal. Something crazy and outlandish, like showering in every freshman dorm. If you're that cyclist, maybe it's to race in 10 different countries before you retire. Or if you're a musician, maybe it's to perform at a different gig each month. These goals aren't an end-all be-all. Their point is just to give you direction and dare you to get out there and share your sense of play with society. Even if you don't accomplish them, you will have immeasurable fun along the way. And just like we found Billy, you'll meet 
and befriend amazing people who share your values through your journey. Your goals can change too, and that's okay. I mean, ours had to change. We no longer live in a freshman dorm together with communal showers. We realized what play meant to us was more than just team showering. It's as simple as doing crazy and ridiculous stunts together. Although our showering days are now behind us, we've used our playtime to work towards some of our new goals, such as setting up a mass electric scooter charging operation, creating our own clothing brand, <laughs> forming a band, and on warm and sunny days, selling fresh burgers and steamed clams. <laughs> The point is to be fluid with it. This is supposed to be a playtime anyway. Your goals can change. What you use as a vessel for play can change. There are no rules. The only mandate is that you should be able to go out and play every week while chasing some goal you set for yourself. As a result, I guarantee you'll feel happier and re-energized as a result of joining the subtleties of life that come from these new experiences. Now, don't get me wrong. You can't just spend all your time playing. You still need to focus on your responsibilities and studies and career. You need to get back to work. But all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And if you don't get that reference, you're too young, look it up. And that's coming from a 19-year-old, so it's pretty sad. The point is to invigorate your work, you must take time to play, even if it's only for a few minutes a day or a few times a week. Having these breaks of pure fun and enjoyment are so crucial to preventing stress burnout, and deteriorating mental health. Not to mention that they open the door to limitless new possibilities, people, and experiences out there for you. Because at the end of the day, that's what life's about. While studies and your career are undoubtedly important, life is about chasing your passions with the people you love. And to the people I love, all my friends who have shaped this ridiculous journey, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You're the reason I smile as much as I do. <laughs> Chasing these passions with these people is what's telling of your true personality and what you love to do. It's how you can really learn about yourself and embodying these principles through the idea of playing has led me to true happiness and adventure. I may not be able to stand here today and claim victory on our team shower conquest, but I can stand here today and claim that this journey over the past year and a half has been the first time I've been truly happy with my life and accepting myself as a person. It's such a beautiful and liberating feeling, and I hope some of the things I've said here today can help you all achieve this internal peace as well. But to backtrack, all of the things I've said here today, all of the wisdom I just espoused, was inspired by the showering escapades of a bunch of teenage boys. Well, I guess you really do think best when you're in the shower. <laughs> Thank you.